Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Municipalities of Monroeville regular council meeting. Today is Tuesday, October 12th, 2021, approximately 7 p.m. If we'd all kindly rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mayor Greesock. Mrs. Gatos. Here. Mr. Poach. Here. Mr. Harvey. Here. Mr. Wolfram. Here. Mr. Arasenko. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Little. Here. Mr. Ratcher. Here. Ms. Rock. Here. Mr. Ugas. Here. Mr. Sedlak. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. Just for the Public's FYI, uh, Mayor Greesock will be back at next month's meeting. He had some personal business to tend to. And right now I'll open it up for public comment on proposed agenda items only. Is there anybody who would like to address council on the proposed agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move over to our executive session announcement. Council conducted an executive session before Citizens Night on Thursday, October 7th. 2021 from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation reasons. Council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the Tuesday, October 12th, 2021 Council meeting. Council will look over the approval of the minutes of the Citizens Night meeting of September 9th, 2021. Council agenda setting meeting of September 9th, 2021 and the regular council meeting of September 14th, 2021. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Questions, council? Seeing none, roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. And go, moving over to our approval of the reports of our tax collections. Once again, is there a motion on the floor? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. And a list of bills and budget transfers. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion to approve. Second. The bill. Quest questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. And payroll report, once again, a motion on the floor. Motion. Is there a second. second? Second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call, Sharon, please. Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. And we're going to move over to our vac vacancies on boards, commission, and authorities. And Linda, you're up first. Um, I have nothing tonight, sir. Thank you. Very good. Eric? Uh, nothing, sir. Thank you. Ron? Yes, uh, Charlotte Vogel was nominated for the Recreation and Parks Advisory Board last meeting. I'd like to make a motion to appoint. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Anything else, Mr. Harvey? No. Mr. Wolfram? I have nothing, sir. Mr. Williams? I have nothing. Very good. <sighs> Moving over to the consent agenda, if you would, Mr. Little. Yeah, number one is 21-5-C, uh, -dash -dash Mark and Courtney Williams. Uh, applicants requesting a con conditional use approval to establish a school in an existing house pursuant to the Monroeville Zoning Ordinance number 1443 as amended section 401, conditional use, and table 201, a permitted use, conditional uses, yard, and area requirements. The property is located at 1830 Old Ramsey Road, in the S Conservancy Zoning District, known as Tax Parcel 861-D-134. Planning Commission recommends approval, and we had a public hearing on this application on Thursday at our agenda setting meeting. Is there a motion on the floor? I'll make a motion. Is there, is there a second? Two. A second. Three. Questions or comments? Yes. Okay, so I wasn't here on Thursday, but I did watch the meeting. And um, 
the wording um, as far as the word school being in there um, instead of it was listed as a church prior and I'm questioning if if the school if that's the proper wording if this is going to be a, a business out of a home uh, if, if I may um, if you want to look at the resolution uh, the resolution has the correct language and the resolution is actually what you're adopting um, and so it talks about conducting edu educational classes on the property and gives some description there are some limitations that the have been discussed with the applicants so all that was was really the advertisement and and it's the the the, uh, the, resol the actual resolution is what's relevant to the description of what's taking place okay and this has been discussed with the applicants the changing of the language mrs gates would you like him to come up i would because i was not here so please come on up sign in please state your name for the record as you speak I'm Courtney Williams. I'm Mark Williams. Linda. Welcome. Hi. Um, since I was not here, um, my questions are going to be, you had stated approximately 10 to 12 people at a time for a class, um, and you would only basically be doing one or two on one, am I understanding that correctly, at any given time? That's the maximum amount of people um, for parking, for travel on that road, for in the home at any given time. There would not be any loud music in the evenings. I live up on the hillside, so I would hear it be probably mm -hmm. before you, the people cross the streetway. Um, I know where your place is located. I can see it when the trees, the leaves are off. So that was one of my concerns, as well as I never really got the straight answer that this was you were going to get a business license from our business office. You have yes. to answer. You have to answer. Yes. Yes. I mean, if we're approved, yes, we're not going to approve if we can't do uh, oh, it. Well, yeah, if you're not approved, you're not going to have. <laughs> sure. Right, yeah. but it was never, it wasn't clear to me that what, at watching at home, and I couldn't ask you myself. So yeah. um, that's why I was glad that you were here this evening. I could ask the questions directly. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty much what I wanted to make sure of, and that if anything would change from that, you would have to go back through zoning again to expand and or change the criteria that we are agreeing to this evening. And we're all on the same page? Correct. Correct. Yes? I think that our language for our purposes, a workshop um, at our farm is more the language that fits what we're trying to do. Sure. Um, school and church is the zoning language and the ordinance. So we're not out to start a church or to start a school per se. We're out to offer classes on our property um, and to do that in a compliant way. Um, we had friends who were farming in Sewickley, mm -hmm. um, thinking that offering classes on the farm was under the purview of their agricultural zoning, and they found out the hard way that it wasn't, right. that they needed a conditional use. So learning from that story, we knew that we needed to start out our venture with a conditional use for offering classes on the property. But these are small workshops. They're not going to pay the rent. They're going to be small things where people can come out for a day and have a class or like Mark's mindfulness classes, right. sort of like a tutoring session or a piano lesson after school, kids will come to take their half hour mindfulness class with Mark. Um, and we appreciate that you learned a lot prior to coming in. I think that makes it easier on both sides. Um, so I thank you for, for that work ahead of time. And you had said about giving back to the community, which um, I think when you saw the presentation that was given from the library, the park and rec department, things like that, they're gonna be looking into, you know, having people come up that want to maybe teach somebody, um, you know, things um, in, in an outdoor setting, which I think would fit hand in hand perfectly, perfectly. together. Sure. And so I would welcome that you would maybe want to get involved further with the community down the road. We would and love we it. love the, I mean, we've worked in 15 years in urban agriculture in the city, teaching kids ecology. We yeah. love the idea of even having a, them come to our space and see what we can do on a bigger area, whatever fits with the carrying capacity of our farm space. And um, people who have seen the land, like we, we have to get creative about how we're using this space. So definitely not, the space doesn't even afford a lot of people at one time. Yeah, right. Um, right. It's a, Mr. It's Mayor, a small farm. Sorry. So <clears throat> Mr. Ratcher, this definitely would not be uh, tax exempt property, correct? No, it would not. Any other questions? Liam? No, I appreciate it though. I'm Thank glad you. I got the it's chance nice to talk to you. To you. Thank yeah. you. Any yeah. other Much. questions from council? No. Thank you for coming up. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Good luck with your project. Thank you folks. so much. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Mr. Little, move over our motions, if you would, Okay, so we have four motions. The first one is a motion authorized to advertise for a public hearing for an intermunicipal transfer of a restaurant liquor license. We discussed this at the Jenna setting meeting on Thursday. Motion approved. Is there a second? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Lippman. Second, a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance accepting Asbury Court. Is there a motion on the floor? Motion. Is there a second? Second. Questions or comments, counsel? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance accepting Grand Wood Court. Once again, counsel, motion on the floor. Motion. Second. Questions or comments? Seeing none, roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, the last one is a motion to install a street light at Service Lane on pool number 194720, which is in Council's uh, packet, and um, Councilman Wolfram submitted that uh, at the work session. Motion to approve. Second. Questions or comments? Yeah, I, uh, a resident down below me, and uh, made a motion to install a street light, and the resident is uh, present to present the petition to the manager. Uh, Mr. Orlando. It's in our packet. This one? It's in our packet. Yeah, we already we have it. it. We already All have right. it, sir. All we right. all have it. So, okay, you don't need anything else? Nope, nope we nope, already. Nope. Okay. Any other questions or comments, Council? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Moving over to our resolutions, once again, Mr. Little. Okay, the first one is a resolution authorizing the distribution of the 2021 General Municipal Pension System Aid pursuant to the Municipal Pension Plan Act of Act 205 of 1984. Uh, council can see the amounts which we discussed Thursday evening, how they will be divvied up, the amounts from the state, and in totality, the, the amount for the non-uniform pension plan and the police pension plan. Motion on the floor. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Questions or comments, Council? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Little. Okay, the second was a resolution electing to amend the non-uniform pension plan administered by the Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement System pursuant to Act 4 of the Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement Law agreeing to be bonded by all the provisions of the Pennsylvania Municipal Retirement Law as amended and as applicable to member municipalities. I mentioned Thursday night at the agenda setting meeting that I wanted to discuss a few items with PMRS. They have not contacted me back yet, so I'm requesting council table this okay. until November. A motion to table. I second it. Roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, a resolution authorizing the proper municipal officials to enter into a traffic signal maintenance agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for signalized intersections in the municipality of Monroeville. Motion on the floor. Motion. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gator? Aye. Mr. Little? Okay, a last one is a resolution authorizing the display of vertical pole banners on PennDOT Highway, streets, and roads, rights of ways of property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. I mentioned on Thursday evening I needed some additional information from PennDOT. I received that. I inserted it into the resolution, and I believe it will be sufficient uh, for them to approve, and we'll be able to sometime this winter or in the spring put up pole banners of which we will be getting some free ones for organizations like the police department and fire departments in the community, and I'm sure everybody has seen the pull banners in other communities. Motion approved. A second. Questions or comments? 
Saying that in roll call, Sharon, please. Mrs. Gatos. Aye. <coughs> Coach. Aye. Mr. Harvey. Aye. Mr. Wolfram. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Ratcher, if you would honor ordinances. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville authorizing the proper officials of Monroeville to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Refuse Collection Division of the Department of Public Works for the period of January 2020 through December 2023. Uh, this matter is currently on the table, and unless council desires to act on it, it can remain in the table. Mr. The Little, table. has any any action? Uh, we have not had any uh, conversation. Uh, Mr. Sedlak and I were talking today uh, with Mr. Ratcher, and we're going to uh, um, try to get the ball rolling and get this back on the table here to get this resolved. So we leave a table then? And leave a table. Good deal. No action. All right. No, Mr. Little, or I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Ratcher. An ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania, a home rule charter community, amending the code of the municipality of Monroeville and ordinance numbers 2361, 2416, 2520, 2533, 2574, 2598, 2610, and 2657 by amending and restating the rules and regulations of the Civil Service Commission. Motion number four. Motion to accept. Second. Questions or comments, Council? Roll call, Sharon, please. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mr. Wolfram? Aye. Mr. Harvey? Aye. Mr. Poach? Aye. Mrs. Gatos? Aye. All righty, thank you, Mr. Ratcher. And we're going to go to the reports of our municipal officials and Bob, anything for us? Yeah, just very briefly, we spoke uh, about the Alcasan Settlement Agreement for the service area last month. Uh, Council approved that, went on to Alcasan. Alcasan has also approved it. It's got to go through a uh, rather bureaucratic uh, process now, but it is approved by both parties, so uh, we can put that issue to bed. Good. Very good. Great. Mr. Little, I'm going to get the other two uh, uh, sure. municipal officials, and then we'll get back to you. Mr. Hughes, <laughs> anything for us? No, sir. And Mrs. Rock? No, not that. Very good. Tim, you are up. Okay, the, uh, as we do under the Home Rule Charter, um, I present a budget to council for the ensuing year. And this year, 2022, I'll only take about five, four or five minutes to go through this. I'm going to start the timer. We, okay, you do that. <laughs> I can take the whole hour. If I you know want. you can. That's why I started the timer. Uh, I know I will. I know. We know. Okay, our, our budget this, for next year is... Is coming at $34,560,993, well, which is a decrease of 3.17%. And the reason for the decrease is because of the restructuring of the bonds that we did this past year. We took our bonds and our debt service now is $1.4 million instead of $3.2 million, although it'll be smoothed out over an extra two years which would have dropped to about $600,000 in the years 25-26. Now we'll be paying the same amount of $1.4 million through the year 2026. <coughs> so that's the biggest reason uh, for the drop. Uh, as far as the budget highlights, uh, the revenue history, I'm not going to go through it uh, every, uh, distinctly on every line item here, but our, our four big uh, revenue items are real estate, uh, earned income tax, business mercantile, and they'll total up to approximately in, in 2022, 24,300,000. And I have in red there, and the public will be able to look at this tomorrow. It'll be on the website. Um, so everybody will be able to get on the website and take a look at the uh, upcoming budget. And our first budget hearing will be October the 28th at 6.30. And then the second one, as per the uh, Home Rule Charter, will be November the 4th, the same night we have our next work session at the same time. Uh, business mercantile tax on all the taxes, we have come through the um, pandemic. I, we're not all the way through it yet, although we have come through it better than had anticipated if we go back a year ago. And I'll talk about that a little bit more under the revenue. But the highlights of the 2022 budget, again, as of last year, we're not going to have a transfer to the OPEB fund. From the general fund, the OPEB fund owes the general fund approximately $5.8 million, and I'll talk a little bit further about that later on in the budget. Our fund balance reserve usage of the fund balance reserve will be a little bit over a million dollars, which is good because in recent years, the past two, three years, we've budgeted a lot more than that. Last year, we budgeted $6 million of usage of the fund balance, but we didn't use it, as has been with every year we've budgeted. Reason being is our revenues have 
have always had gain, we budgeted. A large part of that is because what the tax office has done with business mercantile and delinquencies. They have, they have gone through the budget, uh, like collected 120, 125% of what the budgeted number has been. Um, and as I said, a decrease in uh, debt service payments from 3.2 to $1.4 million. And another highlight of the uh, 22 budget will be the hiring of an assistant municipal manager and a deputy chief of police. The highlights of capital items being purchased, which some of them have already uh, been ordered. Five new police cars. We got a little bit behind because of the pandemic. All of our, all of our budgeted items and expenditures and revenues were really conservative last year. Um, and so that's why we might need, a, we need a couple extra police cars next year. $250,000 for five new police cars. $130,000 for the replacement of a traffic signal bucket truck. $440,000 for the replacement of two 10-ton two dump trucks. It'll take 18 months Jeez. for them to get here because of supply, supply network constraints. Also, we've ordered a new uh, refuse truck for the tune of $225,000. Again, that'll take approximately 18 months to get here. Budgeted a million dollars for road paving. We've usually upped that depending on what the bids come in at, and we'll see how that goes when we put out for the road paving program. Also, we're looking at a possible expansion of the Public Works Building. That right now is in the process. As far as revenue is concerned with respect to the pandemic, in 2020, we projected about a 4% decrease in revenue. We did not realize that, which is a good thing, although we did go down about $617,000, which is about what a lot of different publications nationally across the country expected us. We about hit it right on now and had it's about a 4% reduction we thought we'd have. We had about a 3.8% in, in overall revenue. But as far as the budget's concerned, what we budgeted, we're about $250,000 over that because we budgeted extremely conservatively. For 2021 this year, we budgeted lower. Uh, we thought our revenue shortfall would come in at about 9%, which was projected about $3.1 million, but we are well over <coughs> our budgeted amounts for this year. That's budgeted amounts, because we budgeted very, very conservatively, and that's a very good thing. Um, but as far yeah. as our average collections, we did lose some money to the tune of about six hundred and fifty some thousand dollars, which is way less than what we thought we would lose last year at this time. So we're coming through this pandemic financially pretty good, way better than we had anticipated. But that's no reason to throw caution to the wind. You still have to watch, you know, the numbers with needs and wants. Okay, and the 2022 revenue for next year, it, we budgeted the same way as the chart shows you in the beginning of the budget. We'll probably take in about $24.3 million, which is below what our average collection is over the last three years. Uh, capital expenditures, I went over the highlights of those. Uh, you can read that, that section as you wish. Pollution control and flood reduction, financing capital improvements. Um, I will have a rough draft for council at the budget hearing of a five-year capital improvement program. It's a very rough draft. But as we move in to close out this year and move into next year, when we start finalizing expenditures, the question always becomes, how do you finance these? And so you're, at the last capital uh, improvement program, we had about $16 million worth of uh, capital items over a five-year period. We're trying to get it you know, we're trying to get it in that ballpark right there. Right now we're at about 21 million, I think, I believe it is. But I'll have a rough draft of the capital improvement program when we have the uh, first budget hearing for council just to review. Um, employee benefits, uh, we have, uh, let's see, currently municipality pays health care for 87 retirees <coughs> and 117 active employees. And we have 15 employees or retirees who opt out of health benefits for a monetary incentive, which is less than a premium, which saves us a little bit of money. On and the page, 87 retired employees, is that that's uniform That's not their families, that's just retirees. Yeah, but is that both uniform and non-uniform? Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, on page six, uh, 
when you look at the revenues when compared to 2021 budget and 2022, the biggest increase, you'll see the 17.82% increase under general government. That is the, the American Rescue Plan money that we received the first tranche. And that's the first time I've uh, I had to look up the word tranche back in April. I'm just going to ask you. You know, when, when, when the federal government <laughs> came out with, the, you'll get your first tranche before the end of or before June. And I thought, what is a tranche? In any event, we received approximately $1.4 million in July, the first tranche uh, of the American Rescue Plan. And we will receive. You like saying that word. Well, now you got to define it. The second, I know. I know. It, it makes me sound yeah. esoteric, you know. <laughs> you got to define it now. Come on. It is, it is an allotment of money in the government is what it is, basically. Okay. Good, what I have to do, but I freely trench. admit yeah, that. Right, yeah. uh, but in any <laughs> event, <laughs> that is the reason for that increase because I asked Josie to put that under uh, under the municipal manager, under the revenue section, uh, put it in there, the $1.4 million, which is supposed to come in in uh, May, May or June. Uh, revenue assumptions under real estate tax, under the assessment, our assessment went up, uh, according to the county, about $17 million. Uh, right now, as we speak, that's moving into the year 2022. Real estate taxes, the same four mills, not, uh, not advocating a tax increase. Um, $9 million we usually take in for that earned income tax. We're projected to take in about $177,000 less. That's on the average of what we usually collect. On mercantile tax, we'll probably take in about the same amount on the current collection because this year, even though we budgeted less because of the pandemic, we didn't know what was going to happen with the businesses. We took in about the same amount as we usually do on current. On delinquents, we took in a lot less. All right. Um, but uh, so we're projecting possibly on the delinquent mercantile and uh, business privilege tax uh, a decrease of possibly $600,000 because we. You have to understand, the last three years, we have collected a lot of money, as I said, under the delinquencies of the business and mercantile taxes. We had a banner year in, banner years in 18 and 19 collecting that because of the tax office really doing a great job of auditing. So if you're comparing it to the last three years, that's where the drop off. We hit the budget, but we're not. If you look at the average collections over what we've done, and whether we do that in future years remains to be seen. So you have to budget that on, on somewhat conservative side. I uh, talked about the American Rescue Plan, general fund reserve. We're looking at having a general, general fund reserve of approximately $21.5 million. You had to type that word in there, didn't you? It's, yeah, it's in there, right? Trash, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so our fund balance is, is, is looking very healthy. However, we need to buy a lot of capital equipment as the whole country does, as I just explained about dump trucks, police cars, refuse trucks. I mean, that right there, we're talking about three quarters of a million dollars just at the top of your head. And you can think a little bit more and, and all the department heads out there can, and can come up with a million dollars each of, of what they need. And we'll go through that a little bit with the capital, capital program. Uh, we usually put, um, a lion's share, Josie and I usually put a lion's share of that general reserve in, a, in a, uh, an investment in a plate that gains a little bit more interest. And we're projecting to have about $15 million in, in the uh, plate reserve come January 1st. So the, the general fund balance is, is, is looking healthy. And, um, and, and that's due to what I said, the collection from the tax office, all the department heads you know, watching their pennies on their budget and everybody working together on that. Uh, as I mentioned, if you look under the expenditures, the debt service was reduced. That's down 54% uh, percent, and that's the reason for that big reduction right there. Healthcare premiums, they've only gone up 1.5%, but in absolute dollars, our healthcare has gone up over half a million dollars. Now, reason for that is, and I'll read this verbatim what I wrote in the uh, budget message. What council and the public are required to know is those who have re retired in recent years and those who are scheduled to retire in 2022 will still receive post-retirement health benefits under the same 
pre-65 health benefits agreement that the active employees receive. So you're having retirees retire and they have post-retirement health benefits before they turn 65, so they remain there. But we hire new people to replace them. And then we also hire new people for new positions, like we're talking about interviewing and hiring for a deputy chief and an assistant municipal manager, among other positions. So that is what has increased uh, the, the health care benefits. The uh, library has decided instead of having the part-time employees, they're going to have some full-time employees, which Nicole will go over that at her budget hearing, as she has mentioned to uh, me and a couple other council people. So that's why our health care costs have gone up over half a million dollars. Now, considering our budget has gone down and we've had a first tranche, I like that word, the first tranche. <laughs> I looked it up. American <laughs> I looked it, it up. It, 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 it is a second. portion of total, especially a block of assets is cash or securities. And that's the first definition. Right. Okay. You want to know the second definition? No, I don't. You do? No, he does. It's, it's a cut or slice of meat. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know that one. I well, oh, God. Yeah, we did. All right. Um, so, anyways, that, that's why our health benefit premiums are going up. Is the deep. Um, yes. Right. Talk about actual capital items, and I've mentioned a few of them, but a couple other ones here is we are on the on the uh, docket, so to speak, under the fire agreement to buy for number four volunteer fire department and an aerial ladder truck to the tune of about $1.5 million. Now, we can buy that with cash, depending on how the capital improvement program goes, or we can lease that as we have two fire vehicles leased right now, and I think we have maybe three more payments left on that lease. And I've mentioned the other uh, um, items that are here under the capital. Emergency medical services, $185,000 for their capital expenditures for stretchers and things of that nature. And also, as I mentioned, we're, we're looking at possibly expanding the public works building to accommodate the equipment and the employees we have under the new MS4 division of the uh, public works department. Um, well, and to protect the vehicles, we've spent millions of dollars on those vehicles. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're not being protected right now. Okay. So. And moving over to OPEB, as I mentioned before, the OPEB owes the general fund through the years because actually the general fund is subsidizing the retirees. I mean, we have about $7 million in our OPEB plan, and you're, what you're supposed to do is make a transfer from there. And if we did that, it would be depleted in three, four years. We're trying to keep that solid. We're one of the few municipalities in the Pittsburgh area that actually has an OPEB fund. Everybody else just pay as you go. We're kind of doing that, but what stays on the balance sheet for the general fund is an accounts receivable. Right now we have it's listed there five, $5,849,453. And that's a liability on the, on the balance sheet uh, for the OPEB fund. So we're not going to make a transfer from the general fund to the OPEB fund. Um, we have done that when the stock market, the stock market is starting to settle down. It's not gaining like it was. So this is what we've talked about in the, uh, in the OPEB uh, committee meetings. Um, in total, the liability of the OPEB fund is about $40.3 million. And uh, I've said about two or three years in the past that unquestionably is more than a liability than most municipalities total pension liability for their regular employees. Um, so that's, you know, that, that, I mean, we would, if, if we had to pay out, which that would never happen, you'd have to pay $40 million to pay out to, uh, to all the people for as long as they live. Now, when 20, the year 2028, 2029 comes around, that'll start dipping down because in 2005, that changed where newly hired police officers mostly police officers, they do not get the post-retirement health benefits. Uh, they get an RHS plan where money is put into an RHS plan for them. So that won't start going down until about the year 2028, 2029. Um, on the last page is the general fund fund balance analysis. And just, I won't uh, go through the whole thing, but a projected, a projected unassigned general fund balance at the end of 2022 on December 31st is approximately $21.3 million. And that's somewhat of a pie in the sky because nobody knows how expenses and revenues are going to go. Um, and on the last page, I just mentioned about the American Rescue Plan, which I have uh, talked about. And, um, but I have to 
thank Josie and Tina and Jill and Dara, uh, those four people in general for putting this all together, Josie for vetting all the numbers out, and she does, and Tina for, Tina for formatting it all, because as council knows, we had a new computer system put in, so we had to format this. We had a little glitches when we were formatting this back and forth, and Tina did a lot of work, work there working with Elisa from uh, AccuFund. So that took some time, and Jill naturally puts all the personnel worksheet together, all the personnel stuff and the health benefit stuff, and Joe Sedlak helps her out with that. And Dara, my secretary, she hounds everybody for their goals and objectives and to put that. So a lot of people do a lot of work putting this together. It's a very thick document. It's probably the, it is the biggest document we put together. So that, five minutes? Linda, she, right. <laughs> Plus. Right. We were taking a slice of it. <laughs> we were, we were tranching that. We were that. We were Mr. Little, last item I see you at. Yeah, we have a, uh, a hazardous waste and electronics um, event to collect those items, wasteful items, down at the Public Works Building next Saturday, the 23rd. You can go on the website and register. Noble Environment is the name of the company. New company, another company, not a new company, another company that will conduct uh, one of those uh, recycling events. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Little. And we're going to open up now for a public comment on any municipal item. Seeing none, we'll go over reports of our council. And Linda, you are up first. Um, okay, I just want to mention a couple things from the uh, for the Park and Rec Department. Um, oh. Greenleaf Park is going to have a grand reopening. They have finally gotten all the new equipment in. That will be Saturday, October 30th at 10 a.m. Um, I visited it today with my grandson. It's very nice. Um, and I think. Um, Public Works and the Parks Department for the work that was done there. It's it's really nice and nice for the residents. Um, also, um, they Saturday, October 23rd at Minerva Community Park West um, at the Tall Trees Amphitheater, there is a Halloween fun night for everyone. It's going to start at 4.30, and there's even a movie at 7 o'clock, Hocus Pocus. Uh, costume uh, contest starts. They will have refreshments and pumpkin carving, and um, so it's a good day out for the kids um, and the families, for anyone that's interested. Um, next, uh, thank you to everyone, Josie, the girls, for working on the budget. Um, it's it's a, a lot for us to delve into, but I look forward to our final budget of sitting up here. And lastly, I would like to thank everyone here um, for the condolences for the loss of my father-in-law. Thank you all. Thank you, Linda. Eric. Um, just very quickly, uh, for one thing, is then the 24th is the for the foundation will be holding the pumpkin chase uh it'll be on on saturday and it's still available to register i believe we've had the sign uh, uh you'll see it on on tv 15 for the information for the registration for that um and but i think you have the other part of the halloween so other than that i don't have anything else thank you mr harvey Yes, uh, just a reminder for any of the residents who normally voted at Minerva Junior High, IE Gateway Middle School, uh, obviously it's under construction and that poll has been moved to the Church of Resurrection on Center Road. Secondly, uh, I understand uh, that the bid has been awarded to the company to construct the pavilion that the council approved at the training center for the fire departments. Public Works is uh, going to complete the cement work, and uh, this company will do the construction of the pavilion. I just wanted to thank everybody uh, that, that's in motion. Uh, don't forget that Election Day is November 2nd. Get out and vote, and have a safe Halloween. Don't forget the kids are going to be out on the road, so drive safely. Yes. Mr. Wolfram. Yes. Uh, I want to thank everybody, as I've already been said, who's working on the... Uh, list of things that we get to vote on and everything like that. Uh, also, Linda, I'd like to reiterate my condolences to your family and everything else. It's good to see you back. Uh, Thank you. We also have another member here missing. Other than that, I have nothing. Again, everybody else be safe. They're out there. Thank you. Mr. Williams. Well, it was an honor with Mayor Nick Greesock and myself to present Monroeville at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Monroeville VA outpatient clinic at the Monroeville Mall. With this facility, they are making municipality Monroeville a greater medical center, uh, adding 
to the two hospitals, UPMC, East, Forbes, uh, AHN Cancer Center uh, Institutes and Surgery Center, the UPMC Infusion Center, and the new Recovery Centers of America, which is an inpatient 24-hour facility uh, for drug rehabilitation. Uh, so when our veterans need care, they can come to Monroeville Mall Veterans Center and not fight the traffic and park conveniently to Monroeville Mall for free. So uh, again, uh, they've started the excavation down there. Uh, when they put the uh, footprint fence up, uh, a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Yes. It, it makes it, uh, you realize it, it, how big this is gonna be. Mm -hmm. But for our veterans, and, and I got a couple of friends, uh, one's 95 year old uh, Air Force veteran, and uh, he won't have to run to Oakland to get care. Uh, happy and safe Halloween. Be careful as you drive. Watch out for the wet leaves. They're slippery as ice. Mm -hmm. And uh, Linda, again, my condolences to you and your family. Uh, my prayers and thoughts will be with you in the days that come. Thank it's you. a never easy thing. When you're ready, you're never prepared. And when you're prepared, you're never ready. So God bless you and your family. And that's all I have. All righty, and I'll wrap it up with um, thanking all the staff for putting the budget process together. Mr. Little, you and the staff do a great job. And let's, uh, and again, I know it's already been said, but I'm going to announce that Halloween is Sunday, October 31st, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. So please, and again, I'll reiterate what uh, Mr. Williams said, please be careful out there. And the good news is, our fire department and our police will have a nice presence out there uh, for the safety of our children. And again, Linda, condolences to your family. Thank you. And with that, I'll seek a motion to motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.